right, Joe with Aptera Accessories. Over the past week, Aptera has put out a lot of interesting information. Frame assemblies being assembled by CoStamp in Italy, and the CPC sending some technicians to Carlsbad. Let's take an in-depth look and talk about it. So in the short video that Aptera put out from CoStamp, the video opens up where you can see one of the new frame assemblies on a fixture and jig. This fixture and jig is to align the components, and so the extruded aluminum longitudinal rails can be welded to the castings that are being produced by CoStamp. But there are some very interesting changes to the frame that will impact us future Aptera owners. As the video progresses, we actually get to see the side of the frame and the control arms. Now, the surface finish on these control arms, because they're being made a co-stamp, they don't look like they'd be cast, and I don't believe cast control arms would be strong enough. I'm thinking that these upper and lower control arms on the frame are actually lightweight aluminum forgings. And also, if you have a keen eye, you'll notice as the camera passes past the front suspension, there is also a change to the front steering knuckle but we'll talk about that in a minute. In the next part of the video, we actually see one of the completed frame assemblies that CoStamp has kitted up for shipping to Aptera and Carlsbad. In the center of the frame assembly, you can actually see what I call the rear frame tusk. This is the component that mounts the rear wheel to the aft part of the frame. And if you look, you can see there are two large aluminum cutouts in the bottom part of this component. You can also see two smaller cutouts to the left of this part. And if you look to the top, you can actually see that secondary frame cross member with the X brace and how they've removed so much aluminum from the design. The removal of aluminum is the removal of weight. Also, you can see on the two front, what I call frame horns, which would mount the front suspension, there are two oval lightning holes, removing more weight from the frame design. So as the video moves to the front part of the frame, we also see what I call the lower subframe, which is where the front sway bar mounts to. And there are also a series of lightning holes to remove weight from the original design. Also at this time, we can get a better look at that front steering knuckle I mentioned before. It looks like the design for the front knuckle has been changed to mount a different style front brake caliper. Now, the front brake calipers that Aptero is using on PI2 and PI4 were actually sourced from the Continental Group and were actually a shared part of Volkswagen. Um, I'm really not sure why they would change the caliper design, but for the next 10 frames, um, they'll be using a new part, and I kind of have a theory why, but I'll talk about that maybe at another time. Now here we actually see the side of the front frame horn where the front suspension actually mounts. And if you look at it, you can actually see they've completely changed the design of how the front upper and lower control arms are mounted to the frame. Now the way the control arms were mounted on the static display at CES was very similar to a Lamborghini Gallardo or Murcielago, I forget which, where the bolts actually went through pins uh, mounted out of the control arm into the frame, where these, the bolt will actually go through the frame. There's now a tab that's been added through the control arm into the other side to another tab. Now, the video that Aptara put out from CoStamp concludes with a series of kitted parts. We can actually see on these carts uh, smaller components, bolts, brackets, uh, the extruded aluminum. Uh, side rails, the extruded aluminum rear rail. Um, and if you count really quickly, um, the video shows 10 carts in just the corner of an 11th. Now in this photo, you can see 
parts from CPC. Some of them are the fiberglass SMC parts and some are the carbon fiber SMC parts on shelves. And if you count, we can actually count enough parts to assemble nine bodies. But then we can actually see that Aptera has this brand new frame or body fixture and jig to assemble the bodies. And we can actually see two workers from CPC that will be training the Aptera crew on how to assemble the bodies. Now this body fixture and jig is very important, but we have one body on the fixture and jig, nine sets of panels on the shelves at Aptera, but it looks like 11 frames being assembled by Costand. So the next validation vehicles, we will have 10 validation vehicles with this frame design. But where's the 11th frame possibly going to go? And I think that's why we haven't seen anything from PI3. If you recall, Chris Anthony and Steve Fambro had said that PI3 was going to be the validation vehicle for range and solar. If Aptera had decided to iterate on the frame so they could improve efficiency, it would explain why we haven't seen any validation testing from PI3. Now, looking at the changes that we've seen in this short from CoStamp, I'm thinking Aptera removed an easy 200 pounds of material from the frame design. Now, Chris Anthony has said before that for every 30 pounds of weight, the Aptera does see a 1% change in efficiency. So if they were able to remove 200 pounds of weight from just the chassis design alone, we're talking a 5 to 6% gain in efficiency. And what this means for future Aptera owners is you'll get more range out of your solar and you'll have more range out of your battery pack. Now, Aptera has said their goal for the weight for the vehicle was 2,200 pounds. And what I wonder is these changes, do they mean that with these changes we are getting to the weight of 2,200 pounds? Or will we actually have a weight for your Aptera closer to 2,000 pounds? With the efficiency of the Aptera, you also have to take into account Aptera's partnership with InMotive for their two-speed transmission that Aptera is using to improve efficiency. Now, InMotive has actually produced data to show that their two-speed transmission can see a 10% gain in efficiency for a vehicle if it's used. And with the InMotive two-speed transmission, you can either solve three problems. You can either make the electric motor smaller, which we know for Aptera won't change because they're using the EMR3. You could use a smaller battery pack, which we know isn't going to change because that is already set to be their uh, 42 kilowatt hour usable pack, or you can increase efficiency. So with the weight reduction we are seeing, I think, in the frame, and with the improvements in efficiency of using the in-mode of two-speed transmission, I think we might be able to see a 15% improvement over the numbers we saw when Aptera took PI2, Hermes or Hermes, depending on how you want to say it, on their Arizona road trip. And even in that video, Aptera said that vehicle was overweight and still achieved 122 watt hours a mile, or I believe it was 8.2 miles a kilowatt hour. Now, even with the Arizona road trip that Aptera did with PI2, um, the online community wasn't very nice to them. They, people said it was a scan and it was staged, but the one little detail people forgot is even though they didn't reach their goal and it wasn't an official validation test, it was still the most energy efficient vehicle on the road. So, future Aptera owners, what do you think about the changes to the frame? The increased efficiency we're going to see. Comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.